everyone, this is Vicki with Messy Table Studio with another video of the copy ephemera book that I received for Christmas. Um, a lot of this will be voice voiceover and fast forwarded because it's kind of like the brick and mortar of the book, which is, to be honest with you, not that stinking exciting. Um, what I decided to do was to glue the copy dyed paper onto the chipboard, and that's what I'm doing here with the PVA glue. And then I smoothed it out with a credit card. I don't like it when my paper has bubbles underneath it, although there's ba bubbles on top of the paper, just not underneath it. So it's just a matter of making it smooth and then letting it dry. I did let both the sides dry on the table. And I think I stacked the uh, chipboard basket that I showed in a previous video stack that on top of it to keep the chipboard from bowing. I noticed that when you use a lot of glue um, on chipboard, this heavy chipboard for some reason tends to bow slightly. So I went ahead and put something heavy on top of it so it would keep the um, front and back cover from bowing so much. I don't like it when they bow. All right, right here, I had already divided up all the pages and labeled what they were. I'm cutting them apart because now I'm going to do the fuzzy, fussy cutting thing. Which, I, you know, some days I, I don't mind it. Other days I really don't want to do it. So I cut sections apart because my little guillotine color only does, I think, 7 inches, or 5 by 7. That's what it is. 7 inches across, 5 inches across, 7 inches down. So I have to pre-cut stuff in order to get it in the guillotine. Although I do like the guillotine cutter because I don't have to keep changing the blade. I mean, there is an upside. So here I'm just trimming all the white portions off. I don't want any white to show. Well, very little. <laughs> Some of it I did have to go back and snip away with the uh, scissors. So all this is is just cutting all the pages that had the little tags. The um, This is like the postcard page. So I'm just cutting all the white off of that. I'm not sure where I will use it exactly in the book. This is, uh, there were only two pieces I really had to do special fussy cutting with, and that is the can of coffee and then the little teacup and saucer. They're the only ones that weren't rectangular or square shaped. So I just cut the white off of those. And there's, I duplicated the shot, sorry. <laughs> And yes, I did have a cappuccino with me while I was doing this at oh dark 30, which seems to be my standard record time in the mornings. I think the reason I do it is because there's nobody bothering me. And the rest of this is just making sure that I get the white off of the, the pictures. Some of it was a little more tricky than others, and then I ended up having to trim some of it off, some of it off with the scissors which is really not that big of a deal. At least I didn't have to fussy cut with exact precise cuttings around something. These were basic squares and rectangles and not a big deal. These are the tags that were included in the book. So again, I, I'm just cutting them to smaller pieces so that I can cut them one at a time. I'm trying to use the guillotine cutter for at least the straight edges on some of them to cut down on the amount of fussy cut I have to do. The ones that have the rounded top, I will have to fussy cut those. And then the other tags, they have an indentation on the ends and I had to fussy cut around those. But in between where the straight parts are, I could just use the, the guillotine cutter for that. That's not a big deal, but the little fussy cut details, I wanted to hurry up and get that done. So evidently I finished cutting it and <laughs> cut it right on out of the video. <laughs> Here I am, I'm showing you what I store my um, my cardstock in. Many years ago I made cards and so every time that Michaels would have a sale where they would have, you could get five, five packages of cardstock for 10 bucks or whatever the deal was. I went in and spent money like a crazy person. And I had tons and tons of cardstock. And I was like, I'm not getting rid of it just because I don't make cards. So I went to Amazon and I bought these job tickets that mechanics use. I know some of them use the one that had the black trim on it, but I didn't want the black trim. 
So I bought these plain ones off of Amazon, and I think I've gone through four orders of these things. I put everything in these. I just love it. Um, so I divided them all up in colors, and I was showing you that I used the IKEA magazine holder to put these in. I really like the IKEA stuff. It's much sturdier than the plastic stuff I had used in the past. I'm trying to get rid of those and replenish everything with the IKEA magazine holders. So I have all my stuff divided up into colors, and every different color goes in one of those clear job tickets. I had a hard time getting this package back in there because there was a lot of it. And those job tickets really aren't meant to have a lot of stuff crammed in them. They're meant for like one or two pieces of paper from the mechanic when he's working on your car. Well, I had more than that. So some of them I could not fit in the job tickets because it was just too much bulk. So I just set those in the front of the magazine holder and never put them in the job ticket. And see, I'm struggling to get them in there right now because they're just there's too much of it for that ticket ticket holder. I divided up all my colors, and I think I have six or eight of the IKEA magazine holders, and they come in different widths, but they're all the same height, and they're all the solid plastic, and they are all wonderful. I don't remember how much I paid for them, and yes, I've had them for quite a few years, so they may have changed what the magazine holders look like now. I'm not really sure. I guess in this shot, I'm just yammering. Evidently, I can talk the bark right off of a tree. <laughs> I should have speeded this part up or um, possibly cut it out. <laughs> there it is. There's the, the nice IKEA magazine holder. I really like these. They're very sturdy. And they're white because a lot of my, all my furniture and everything in here is white. All right, so I'm going to take this brown cardstock. And I'm trying to figure out where to put the, the front and the back. Do I need a background, what color background? Because I cut the white off of that, I made the sheets too small to be the whole front cover. So now I have to glue paper onto the chipboard again so that it has a background color to contrast with the print that's going to be glued on top of it. I decided I was going to use that brown stock cardstock, and, and then I was going to use that for the back of the book and thought, well, okay, then I will date it and I will glue some kind of ephemera on the back. And there I am holding it up there talking about how I would just glue that on there. And then, I, I as you will see later on, I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm very good at that. I'm trying to explain my decision. That's why I'm doing the voiceover. <laughs> now I'm looking through the papers trying to decide what I want to do. And I remembered that there was a print in that um, double-sided page section that I clipped together that one of those pages was white and so if I use that for the backing on one of the either the front or the back cover I wouldn't be wasting the print on the back side so I decided instead of doing the cardstock that I would glue that onto the back of the book I didn't want to waste good paper that was two-sided on the back of the book because who sees the back of the book but I decided to go ahead and put that lovely print on the back of the book because it was white on the back side and I wasn't going to really lose anything by using it. So I ended up gluing that on to the chipboard and that is the back of my book, which I'm happy about. And the only part I'm sad about is that I can't get two pieces of paper out of that one cut. I mean, I got two, but I can't use the second one 
to line anything else because it's slightly smaller than the one that you glue onto the chipboard. So I just said in this, when I recorded this, I said I could use it for pockets, a flip out, um, you know, that kind of stuff. I can still use that paper, even though it's white on the back side. I can still use it for something else. And I could glue something back to cover up the white. So it was a versatile piece of paper. All right, so these are a little out of order, but here I am gluing down the tags and things that I had cut out. And yes, I double glued it so I make sure I had time to move it around if I didn't like it. So this is out of order, but this shows me gluing all this stuff down. Um, I say in the in the video that I'm very sad that the company put backing on the tags and things because if you use it as a tag, you don't want it to be loose thin paper you want it to have a little bit of girth so that's why i ended up gluing it on top of the cardstock and i don't know if i mentioned this somewhere else in the video or i'm imagining it but i do have a stamp that has lines on it for text and i can just stamp that onto the back of the cardstock or i could leave it blank but I was not leaving my tags loose. I'm trying to remember what I did here. I filmed this a couple of days ago and a lot of water's gone under this bridge since then. <laughs> oh, there's, oh, I'm explaining how I glued them onto the cardstock and that I was disappointed that they printed that lovely line stuff on there and explaining that I have a rubber stamp that I can stamp over that in case I want to use it for a journaling card. I still have not poked the holes in the tops yet, but I'll get to it. I'm trying to decide what to do with the tags. Do I want to stamp them or I want to leave it blank just in case I want to, you know, glue something on the other side. But I just didn't want very thin, glossy paper tags. So I'm explaining all that in the video. And there are the ephemera pieces to that's the postcard stuff that I cut out with the guillotine cutter. Um, I clipped it. See how it's got that lovely brown on the back with the lines? And I'm saying that it's very floppy, glossy paper that if you're, if you're not going to glue it flat down on a surface, you might want to consider gluing it on cardstock. Or, you know, scrapbook paper, something to give it a little more oomph. I'm really enjoying this book. Since I drink cappuccinos and lattes all the time, this book really did appeal to me. Man, there's a lot of shadows in that video. Well, when you record at 3.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, it tends to happen. Even with three lights on. Oh my goodness. I'm just explaining away everything. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is, is I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to fix this video so I fast forward through the silliness here. Okay, so I sped up the last portion of the video where I'm just gluing and trimming edges, trying to get 
the paper for the back or the front side ready so I can glue the um, big images on the front cover and the back cover. I'm showing you the bubbles. I really like the bubbles. I have it, it really, believe me, it, it happened by accident. <laughs> and I dyed those papers last summer. So I'm not exactly sure how I got the bubbles, but I really like how they turned out. Here I'm looking through the paper, explaining that I'm going to just fold those and then cut the white part off of them because I don't want any of the white in the book. I'm trying to decide what paper to use for the back cover. And then I switched to trying to figure out to cut out the front covers and how to fix them. So I did trim all the white off. And when I did that, that caused <laughs> a secondary problem, as you will see in a second. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Right, so I'm looking at them and they don't fit on the, they're too too small to cover the whole chipboard piece. So I end up cut, cutting them in half. And then I cut more off of them because I made them a little bit smaller so you could see the outside paper. And then I remembered that I was going to put um, eyelets. And then I had to shave more off of it because I don't want the eyelets to be crimped inside or on the printed paper. And I'll show you in a, I think in this video, it will show you in a second that I scooted them very close to the edge because I didn't, I'm trying to make allowances for the eyelets. If the image had covered the, the board the whole way, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care that the eyelet cut into the paper, but because these papers were too small to begin with, I cut them even shorter. See, there I am looking to see if I'll be able to have room to fit these fat eyelets on there. So I had to cut the paper a little shorter because I didn't want half the eyelet to be on the image and half the eyelet to be on the copy paper. I wanted it to all be on the copy paper and not cut into the image itself. So I kind of scooted it to the edge to look to see if I would have room for the eyelets, which will be in the next video. So thank you everyone for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, I do this for fun. So I hope you guys enjoy it and you learn something while you're at it, right? All right. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.